What's up there, YouTube? Well, now that I got that new 30 amp charger slash discharger slash I can do everything in the freaking world charger from Banggood, why don't we check pack 14? All right, so basically what happened during the live stream load test, I was just pulling a crap ton of amps out of it just because for the hell of it, and it makes a good video, I think, I don't know. Basically, I was pulling a crap ton of amps out of a 10 kilowatt system, basically so people can see what a 10 kilowatt power wall can do. Technically, you don't wanna pull 70 plus amps out of a 10 kilowatt system for for that long. I mean, it's fine. You're you're still discharging less than one amp per cell. I mean, in real life, I mean, that's never gonna happen. But it was basically just a stress test. You know, to find out any weak spots or weak packs. So I think the first little test that I'm gonna do before I start removing cells or doing anything with this pack, I'm gonna do a discharge test and I'm gonna do it with the new antimatter charger slash discharger. I got pack 14 out of the power rack, got the charger, and yes, I did remember to unhook the solar panels from the charge controller. I haven't actually done anything with this yet other than pull it out of the box and look at everything. Reading through the little manual here, I think really the max amp discharge that I can do is probably only like 15, unless I hook up a external expanding discharge something. It looks like a resistor in between the battery and the charger on the positive leg and it looks like you have to have the the balance leads hooked up as well. So I don't have any sort of balance leads. I'm sure I could probably rig something up, but I'm not going to do that right now. You know, since I like to overthink things and overcomplicate things, pretty much just going to go with this other mode over here, the discharging a lithium battery, and then I'll just change the low voltage to like three, because I'm going to go all the way down. I guess we'll just push some buttons and hope it works out. I guess we'll see what it does. Oh, and I'm probably going to use a... Actually, hold on a second. I'm going to go grab a server power supply off one of the mining rigs and I'll be right back. All right, so this is going to be my power supply. It is a HP DPS-750RB. It's just a 750 watt power supply. And I did do my own little uh, modification here, of course. So, um, yeah, pretty much all I did with this is I soldered a switch on leg 33 and 36 this guy right here. The next big pad over is your negative and the next big pad after that is your positive. And it's also on the lower side for the positive and negative as well. And I didn't do anything with these pins right over here. So pretty much you just need pin 33 and 36 with the switch on it and that's how you turn it on because there's no other switches for these or anything like that. I guess we'll have to just make this work. All right, so that's gonna be our power supply. The next thing, which I was going to do. I had some like banana, banana holes. You know, the female side for these plugs. I took apart some other meter that I had that had the, the female in. I set them down somewhere. That was about four days ago. It's probably, I don't know, I couldn't tell you where it's at. And I was gonna use those and I was just gonna solder them right to these little pads here, but I cannot find them anywhere. So this is gonna be a little more ghetto rig than I had originally planned. I'm gonna have to just clamp the, uh, the terminals right to the pads with these guys. How about that? Is that gonna work for you guys? It's gonna have to work because that's what I'm gonna do. Okie dokie, smoky. This onto there. Wow, these actually have quite a bit of tension on them, so it should be just fine. There we go. How's that? That work? And then I got my little on and off switch right here. Okie dokie. And then... I need that guy there. Okay, there. Too bad these weren't a little bit longer. Pack 14. And we might as well set up one of these guys on here too. 
All right, he says 4.18. This is from Harbor Freight, so I don't know how accurate it is, but I guess it would just be more of a reference. All right, let's get this party started. I'm gonna put it on 30 amps to see what it'll do, but I don't think it'll do it. All right, here we go. Twelve hours and seventeen minutes. Did you see the bounce back on that voltage though? It just shot right back up. Well, I don't know. I mean, if you look roughly at 2.99 volts, the meter off to the right, the Harbor Freight meter. Now I did verify the voltage with that to my other meter and it's pretty much the same. But if you look at the antimatter right at 2.99 volts, the Harbor Freight meter still says like 3.32 volts and then of course as soon as it's done discharging it shoots right back up and the antimatter is pretty much the same voltage as the meter so i think we might have to do a redo and i'm probably going to have to lower the amp on the discharge and see if that will be a little bit more accurate because also at the very very beginning when it first started the voltage on the antimatter went down pretty far and the harbor freight meter didn't really go down that far so I'm probably gonna do it on a lower amp discharge and see if I can get it to be a little bit more accurate but all in all I mean 211 amp hours it's not that far off from my own calculations it's like what 15 or something like that I mean that's not that far off so I wonder what one of the good packs will be I don't know, so I will go ahead and recharge this and then I will do another capacity check and I'll maybe I'll do it at, I don't know, what do you guys suggest? Put it down in the comments section on what you think I should discharge this pack at and we'll make it happen. I guess we'll just go ahead and recharge it real quick. And we're gonna put it on 30 amps to see what it does. I was not expecting it to go up to 30 amps. I thought I needed a higher voltage to get up to 30 amps, but apparently not. I'll have to reread the directions for sure. All right, so I was getting ready to go upstairs and I figured I would touch these wires real quick just to make sure that they're not gonna like melt or anything like that. They are actually really warm, so I'm gonna lower this down to probably 15 amps and then leave it, but I'll see if I can get a temperature reading on these and then I'll change it. 104.5 degrees the charger I did get a reading of 148 somewhere it was just kind of hard to tell but I got the time lapse on there so if it catches fire I will definitely well catch part of it and then the camera will probably catch on fire too all right well here we go Wires on this side are not even remotely warm at all. They're still actually cold to the touch. Oh, this is actually the intake side. The air is blowing out on this side. It's about 82.5. The little wire connectors are a little warmer. Highest reading over there now is 93. The rest of it's around 84. Oh, 
Oh yeah, those cooled off a lot. Nice. So basically these wires right here on this side are just a little too small for 30 amps. All right, well, that's all I got pretty much. I guess I will wait for your comments down below. And in the meantime, I'll probably just do the test on my own, but, uh, and I'll report back as soon as I find out and we'll see you on the next one. We, uh, I forgot what I was even talking about. I mean, I know it was pack 14, but. Um, yeah, uh, um, I end on there. It looks, I can pop, it looks, um, and, and, um, and we might as well set up one of these guys too. Of course. You're gonna stay there. Uh, um, and, or no, 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 down here, I don't know. I'm not, I don't know. I'm not exactly sure. Um, re, but if you look at the anti-meter, anti-meter, Nice and cool now. Nope. Um, while I wait for your guys' hi, bud. <laughs> yeah. <laughs>